clean as a motherfucker. Dirty will go stop me from finishing the scheme like a Ponzi. I'll be sliding through the city with my side again. Then pack it. You're doing yourself, guy, Mr. Buddhas. And on today's episode, the Genesis Coupe gets a engine leash. Uh, do it yourself, engine leash, that is. Um, they don't seem to make them for the 2.0T yet. They make them for the 3.8s. Uh, basically, the point of an engine leash is to help support the engine mounts because on OEM, when they're not so stiff, the engine can actually rock quite a bit. Um, I've seen some videos, especially of the 2.0T, and it seems to rock quite a bit this way, especially under heavy acceleration and stuff like that. So I figured, why not make one myself? So I went to Auto, um, AutoZone, wow, I went to Home Depot and uh, <clears throat> found a SAG, anti-SAG gate kit. Um, it's not really meant for what I am using it for, but from what I've seen, pretty much all they do is use a metal rope to attach to, to attach it to the strut tower towards the engine hoist mounts. Um, so I figured I got this kit right here, and I figured that the the hook that it has will actually help me create tension without me having to actually pull it myself. So I'll be able to adjust it via the volts that way. Um, I'll obviously have them all stretched out first, or uh, outwards for the bolts, and then as I get a preset measurements for the wire and get it all nice and cut. Um, then use the bolts to, you know, bring them in and kind of give that tightness to the wire and, uh, you know, give the mounts some support. Um, but yeah, guys, uh, I'm going to also make a small bracket to put towards into the strut mount. This way I don't have to just tie it around there. It looks a little bit cleaner. Uh, I'll be showing that as well once I make the cuts and, and get some measurements and stuff like that. But yeah, guys, see. All right, guys, here we have the anti sad kit kit. Uh, I'll pretty much will be just using these to hold the wire. You just clamp it on the wire itself once I get it nice and pre-cut and set. As you can tell, I already have the hook open. Uh, I will be using these, whatever in that they are. Because then, obviously, I'll be using the small little, little, small little bolts here for the clamps. Uh, my main point right now, sorry for the noise, it's rainy outside today. Um, as far as looking here, uh, I was looking at two options I'll looking for the engine voice mounts. There's the one next to the PCB valve, and then there's one next to a metal line. Now, I see most people tend to use this side here, but I mean, it's kind of it's kind of hard to do, which makes the way to the vacuum. I'll come to the and see how much resistance I'm having in the line. So I'm going to keep it perfect. I'll hook it, then I'll use the inside cable, the shooting, the torus, the surround tower. I'm going to get it right here to the inside cable, and I'll use the bolt action here to try to make it. I should give it that leeway with the post here to make it stabilize. That should be just enough to get it from the rocket. But we'll see what it will do. So I'll take the fish between the bracket piece. There's about 8 inch aluminum cleats in my head. I cut about 2 inches wide, 6 inches long. I'll sit in the video and have it out of the way. Um, this is the bottom. Can you tell? Get this to. I'm going to put the wire through the board, but if it was a piece right now, I'm going to put it down to the bracket. We'll take that, put it on, and get this wire through the board, and then we'll tie it up again, see how it's going to do this. And we are back. Sorry, I'm going to put the wire through the board. This is our next time to do this. Well, the wire through the board. Yeah, we're going to do that. And we're going to do that. We're going to do that. Hello, 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 world. It is I again, your do-with-yourself guy, Mr. Buddhas. On today's remix episode, which I'm pretty, pretty much just planning to add her on to the other episode, um, I have a V1 pretty much is what I'm calling it right now, uh, at least my, you know, my first attempt. Uh, I had a V1 engine leash that I posted out yesterday or the day before. Um, I have put it in a couple of groups. Uh, I'm not perfect, so, you know, I take critique very well. Um, so one of the guys was saying that it wasn't very effective because the engine would still roll. It had space to move. And, you know, I seen it, and I kind of already had it in my head, but I wasn't 100% sure until I got, a, uh, you know, a, a second, second opinion about it. So, I decided to rework it. It came out great. I'll be showing you guys how. In the same video, um, I'll leave my prior um, videos of how I did it the first time. And then I'm going to just pretty much add this one on top of that video. Just to make it a little bit longer. And just to show the differences between my first mistake and my correct way of doing it. Thank you guys. See you soon. Here we have it, guys. Uh, I currently have it set up already. This is from uh, last night. I already had pretty much got it done. Um, it looks, you know, it does look better, it does look like it makes more sense, it does look like it will hold better, it doesn't give it as much roll. Um, but here we have it, I pretty much still have the same pieces, nothing really has changed. I still have the bracket, which helped me uh, extend the wire out because I had cut it earlier. 
Um, I still have the eye hook, still doing the stain, still causing the tension. Um, then I have the clamps over here. Now basically, all I did, this mount, or this engine hoist, initially comes flipped this way. So it's actually pointing, this, this, this hole is actually on this side. So what I did was I unbolted it, from that bolt right there. The bolt has a heat shield as well for this plug over here. I would not delete that just to protect it because I know that it can get very hot and it's probably there for a reason. Um, so what I pretty much did was that that heat shield, this little tab right here that you can see, it actually was bent in because it, it, it went over the, the hoist uh, mount right here. So I pretty much went on it and over it and then you put the bolt through. So what I did was I pretty much flipped the mount or flipped the hoist. I Instead of this being in the front, it is now in the back of the hoist, uh, yeah, the hoist uh, mounting point. Um, I straightened out the tab this way it can actually fit into place because it wouldn't sit with it being backwards. So I flattened out the tab with just a regular, just one of these regular things right here. Just kind of squeezed it and bent it into place because it's really not thick. Um, I had luckily had one of these bolts already in my house, but what you can do is get a thick, thick enough um, threaded bolt, pretty much put it through here, use two nuts and two washers, a nut on this side to lock it in place, this way it doesn't keep rolling into the hoist mount, um, then you would use a washer just to, you know, just to help it grab more surface area, and the same thing for the other end, a washer and a nut, and then pretty much just put them boys together and that'll you know it'll give you that extra uh, length that you need to clear the valve cover itself uh, it looks like it's touching but it's really not at all um, the only thing that I didn't notice that it kind of touches is this harness right here um, but it's nothing crazy um, I will plan to put maybe something rubber just to give it that extra protection here just to give it that little insulation but it shouldn't do anything as far as any actual damage uh, it's not touching any of the actual airlines so everything there is it's uh it's fine, it's just going right under it. Bad. I will try to post a uh, boost breaking video again, but I'm not that great at it, but I'll give it a shot once my kids are up. Uh, yeah, but this is my current setup. Um, you can pretty much do it yourself anyways. Like I said, an anti-sag gate kit. Um, now all you would need is to buy a threaded bolt that'll be long enough to go through here and give you enough clearance on the outside of the valve cover. Um, you would have to flip your mount towards the inside to give you just that extra, you know, that extra space where you don't have to get as long of a bolt. Uh, you will have to bend your tab and then just kind of force it. Alright guys, the Genesis project is complete, it now has a leash. From the video comparisons, you can tell there's a small difference as far as movement goes. I will have to retighten the clamps a little bit more just to give it more, you know, tension. Um, this is a do-it-yourself, so by all means, if you guys want to do this, go ahead. This is exactly why I made this video for you, for you guys and for myself. Uh, I bought the kit from Home Depot, 13 bucks and some change, pretty cheap. Uh, it took me like about an hour between fabricating the little metal piece and stuff like that and making holes and stuff like that. Um, but yeah guys, um, if you like the video, go ahead and hit that like, subscribe for more content, and you guys have a great day. Later. See, I'll be sliding through the city with Maserati and then packing the paper rise to the size of a stabilizer with friends, taking a couple of shots of hand, pass out, repeat, do it all again.